Hello and welcome to my first video in this series on learning Adobe Edge Animate. Um, when you first open up the program, the, you'll get this welcome screen. And um, anyway, I want to point out this getting started link right here. Here are the tutorials that come built into Adobe Edge. You're going to want to go through these. There's not that many. It doesn't actually take that long and it will absolutely bring you up to speed and answer all of your questions with Adobe Edge Animate. So I definitely recommend taking the time to go through that. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you a brief introduction to Edge Animate. Um, okay, so like it says right here, create animated interactive HTML content for the modern web. We get to create animations in a similar way, actually, as using um, Adobe After Effects, if you're familiar at all with that, because we have a timeline that we set keyframes into our various layers to create animations. But unlike a program like After Effects, where you actually render a movie file at the end, you actually just export all of your code and then you can actually use that on the web. So you can create interactive clickable animations and games and animated banners and iBook widgets and uh, all kinds of stuff. So let's get started. Um, so you can come over here to File, New. You can obviously hit uh, Command N or Control N um, or you just go to Create New and let's do that. Here we go. Um, if you are an After Effects user, you are in luck because you probably feel pretty comfortable looking at this setup right now, as you should, because it actually functions in a fairly similar way. The major difference with this program is what it's actually doing under the hood, so to speak, what's actually being outputted at the end. Um, so just like in After Effects, and don't worry if you don't know After Effects, um, for those of you that do, I will be mentioning, you know, various similarities just to help you, but don't worry if you don't know it, you don't need to. Um, anyway, here's our timeline. Um, when we bring in our objects or work with different objects in here, we'll have layers of them and we can actually set keyframes at points on here to animate. Okay, so let's see. Just default right out of the box here, um, we have what's called our stage and it gave us a default size and a default color of that stage. So, um, Let's see, what can we notice without making any changes at all? Well, okay, over here, these are our elements, right? And um, these are actually our HTML elements. And we have our stage. And notice how it says there's a div tag there called stage, all right? Now, it's um, basically wrapping this in a div tag. So if you're familiar with HTML, if you're not familiar with HTML, don't worry. But I do recommend brushing up on it or at least going through some intro tutorials. There's a million of them online. Um, just look up, you know, basic HTML, you know, tags. It doesn't actually take that long to learn HTML, but just so that you understand a little bit more about what's happening here. Okay, so, um, well, let's change some default settings right now. So we have a stage that's 550 pixels by 400 pixels. Let's go ahead and change that to 800 by 600. Okay, all right. Now, well, um, what size, sh size should this be? It's just going to depend on your project. Are you making a banner for your website, some kind of uh, animated infographic? Um, you know, if it's ma if you're making something for iBooks, it's probably going to be 1024 by 768. Just depends on what you're doing. Um, for now, this will work. And let's see here, what else? Um, well, it's white, okay, by default. Let's go ahead and change that. Here's a little white square right here that'll bring up this color swatch. And let's go ahead and just change that to red and then change it to black. I want a black background, okay? If I wanted a gradient, I can actually select the square next to it. Click on this over here. We'll go ahead and make that this blue color. Click on the bottom. Go ahead and make that this uh, cyan color right here. And there we go, we have a nice gradient, all right? Although I don't want that gradient. I want my black background. So I'm going to select this uh, square with the red slash, none. There we go. Okay, now notice when I hover over these, up pops uh, you know a little bit of code, letting you know what's being written, okay? And um, yeah, for those of you familiar with CSS, okay? So anyway, let's go ahead and, well, let's add, some, uh, let's add something new to this. So up here we have these tools, okay? Now, um, these are pretty universal tools right here across a lot of Adobe products, right? The T for text, okay? The hand tool to drag things around. Uh, this for zooming, right? This magnifying glass. And then we have shaped tools right here. Rectangle, rounded rectangle, and ellipse. Um, don't worry about these two yet, we'll get there. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna draw a shape on my stage. So I'm gonna select the rectangle, 
come over here and click and drag. Okay, now a bunch of changes just happened. Okay, so um, I got a rectangle and it gave me this default color fill and it made it the size of whatever um, I just, when I clicked and dragged, whatever size that was. And then a whole bunch of different things opened up in the properties panel over here. Here's the properties panel, here's the timeline, uh, elements panel, assets, stage. <laughs> okay, so let's go back over here. Now, when I click on the stage, notice these properties change, okay? This is the options that we have to work with. If I click on the rectangle, these are all the options I have to work with. There's quite a few. So, um, well, let's just move down the list here. Um, this is this affects opacity. So if you bring this down, it's actually making this more and more transparent, okay? Um, I don't want to give the illusion that this is just making it darker. It's making it transparent. For example, if I come down here, select this rectangle, and either right-click and hit Duplicate, or select and hit Command-D, or Control-D if you're on Windows, um, I've just created two. Now I'm going to come up here and bring down this opacity. Okay, and now see how it's partially transparent? Okay, let's go ahead and delete that and move on down the list. Let's select my rectangle again. So, um, X and Y position. X and Y position. Okay, now I'm moving it like this, but also notice if I move this, those numbers change. 164, 10, minus 21, 248. See that? Okay, so it updates every time you move something around. Uh, this is the uh, width and height. Notice that they are uh, linked right now with this chain. So if we move one, it adjusts both. We unlink it. We move one, it only adjusts the width. Okay. Okay, moving down. Color. Now, color is just like for background. So I'm going to go ahead and select this color and we'll give us, we'll make a red square. Okay. And um, let's see, what else can we do here? Border. Right now, border set to none and zero pixels. Let's change that. And it's set for it to be a black border, but we're not going to be able to see that, right? So let's go ahead and change it to a blue border. Okay. And we'll set it to solid. And I'll increase this up to like 20 something. Eh, 27. Okay. So there we go. Um, easy enough. What if we don't want a solid fill? What if we want a gradient? We come right over here and select this. Uh, box with the red slash and make a gradient and let's go ahead and make this gradient oh cyan by let's get a magenta color going here like so okay and um again we can change the uh you know width of our border like so okay so here we go here is a shape that we've drawn with a gradient and as we hover over these we can see that it's actually writing our uh css and html for us okay um so let's see here. Let's move on down the list. We have transform. Now I'm going to introduce the transform area and this transform tool. Okay. So actually just adjusting the values, you can scale up and down. You can skew. You can uh, change the origin, which for example, if I bring this down, see that little blue square in the middle there? If I go over here to rotate, I can rotate in a circle. If I change the origin so that that uh, blue, little blue square is right here, it's going to rotate around this. See? Okay. Easy enough, right? I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Command Z a couple times and undo this. There we go. Um, moving on down. We're going to skip cursor for now until we start actually uh, working with some web functions, you know, like oh, links or clicking on an object to make it animate or something like that so the cursor will change. We'll deal with that uh, a little bit later. Corners. Now, we selected a uh, rectangle, and it made these sharp corners. You, you're not stuck with those, though. Um, if I go ahead and go to this little zero here, I can actually round out the corners. See that? I've rounded out the corners. What if I only want three of these corners rounded? I can un uh, select right here, which is saying don't round that corner. Come down here and do it again. Okay, now maybe make this a little bit more extreme. And I've just made this kind of interesting shape right here. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and reset all of this. Set this back to zero. There's our uh, rectangle again. If I come over to four, I get four different values here, and I can independently change the degree that these things uh, become more round. <laughs> um, like so. Okay. Yeah, okay, so see that? I can make this interesting shape right here if I'm making a logo or whatever. Um, 
Cool, and of course I can change it from pixels to percentage if I want to, right? All right, but what I wanna do actually is reset everything. Okay, so there's my rectangle again. Um, let's see, shadow, actually you just create a shadow. Um, similar to any of the other uh, text or graphic programs you might be familiar with, we'll work with that actually when we put some text on here. Let's open up these uh, CSS filters. So um, just go through all these and play with them. You know, you can invert your colors. You can uh, rotate through your hues, okay? You know, saturate, sepia, grayscale. You can blur the image. Look at that, okay? All right. And, um, well, I would just play with these some. I'm going to keep it the way it is right now, and uh, we're going to throw some text on top of this, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to hit T. Okay, now... Unlike other Adobe programs, when you select T, you might be uh, thinking you just click somewhere and you can just start typing. That's kind of true, but it functions a little bit differently. Let's see. It's similar. It's um, This text actually functions in this more similar to InDesign and um, iBooks Author. Okay, so you actually just click and drag out a text area, and then the text box opens up and you type something in it like this. Okay, whoops. Uh, hello world, right? Okay, and there it is. Now, rather than actually, you know, selecting the text and making changes in here, you actually make changes over here. Although you can actually hit return. You see that how that was affected? You can do that and you can add some space and things like that, but you can't do much, okay? Now, let me undo that. Okay. Um, but when we have the text selected right here, okay, we can actually uh, then work with some of uh, our CSS properties over here. For example, um, well, the same positioning works here, you know, but notice how it's not changing the text. It's actually changing the uh, text box, okay? That's the same with the width and the height. It's actually changing the text box, that area, okay? Down here where this says text, okay? It might be closed for you, open it up. Um, this is actually how you affect the size. See that, I'm changing uh, the size here in pixels. And these are pretty familiar uh, symbols right here, not just for Adobe, but they're kind of universal symbols. You might recognize them from Microsoft Word or, you know, whatever uh, text editing program that you use. You know, this would be left and right justified and center. Although in this case, it's writing CSS. So notice when I hover over this, ah, it's that CSS text align. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and center the text. Okay. And that's, you know, that symbol there is pretty common across all text programs. Oh, I okay, could, you know, underline it, put in italics. Um, let's see what else here. The weight here, you know, bold. Um, you know, how how heavy is it? You know, maybe we'll make it really bold. And um, let's change the color as well. Um, let's change the color to white at first. Why not? Okay, so that's how we do that. Now, if we come down here to the transform controls, um, you know, go ahead and just explore these. They're pretty self-explanatory. We can rotate. We can actually skew. Okay. And um, let's see, what else should I show you right now? Um, ah, shadow, why not play with shadow? Let's turn on shadow. So uh, notice it's all grayed out, we'll click on. And we have a shadow. I don't know if you can tell right now, but the text did pop a little bit. Let's make it pop a little more. We'll kind of, you know, bring it up off that stage a bit, like so, uh, like that. Okay, and you know, we can actually uh, increase or decrease the blur, okay? And we can actually adjust the color of that, okay? If I select this, you can actually make red or you know blue or cyan or whatever. But I'm gonna go ahead and just make that black for now. Um, so now we have our you know a little bit of shadow on our text. Um, let's open up the CSS filters. Okay, um, we can invert. Yes, make it the opposite. However, hue's not. There's no real hue here to rotate because it's white. All right. So let's go ahead and change that. So we'll come up here and we'll change the color to red. Red text, okay? Does not look very nice actually, but whatever, it's just a demo. Um, now we can actually rotate through the hue. See that? Okay. So that's a real basic rundown here of your layers panel, your elements. Um, we'll get to the library assets in the next video actually. And um, your CSS properties over here, okay? And um, you know how you draw in a uh, couple of basic shapes, throw some text on and whatnot. So uh, if you're feeling comfortable with this, um, we'll go ahead and jump into the next video. And what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to actually start animating. Okay. Um, so I'll see you in the next video.